Good morning, folks. Thank you for attending today. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, pack proper packaging and selection of MOSFET components for high reliability applications. Uh, in this discussion today, we're going to talk about typical MOSFET applications, device characteristics and selection, hermetic packaging options and the selection criteria, therefore, assembly methods and selection, MOSFET calculated thermal profiles, performance and thermal analysis, and current Minko power MOSFET availability and product line expansion. Today, a lot of the uh, typical applications that we find for modern day MOSFETs include load switches, load balance or load sharing, motor controller or drivers, synchronous rectifiers, DC to DC power supplies, AC to DC inverters or power supplies, solar inverters, uninterruptible power supplies, and actuators. When you look at the typical applications that we have for these MOSFETs today, we're always considering the end application, its uses, and the environments in which we're subjecting the devices to, extenuating conditions of moisture, pH, dust, dirt, corrosive fluids, oils, all contribute to the, the proper selection criteria for the packaging, the high, rel, the high rel or high reliability and harsh environments. The platform examples today that we have would be airframe protection systems, airframe sensors, airframe countermeasures, commercial airliners, your typical C4 ISR, which is command, control, communications, computers, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. And then in the commercial airline for Boeing and Airbus, as well as Embraer, everything from uh, application use for braking, flap control, uh, radios, communications. So a, a vast array of applications for MOSFETs. In, 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 in naval, you have uh, surface ships, subsurface, including submarines and unmanned marine vehicles. Prevalent uh, device characteristics that we find today for the modern day MOSFET include it's an insulated gate architecture. Uh, it's voltage driven, so meaning voltage applied to the gate turns on the device. Source to drain flow is initiated via application of the voltage to the gate. As you increase the voltage to the gate, that increases the load current. Maximum ID occurs when the applied voltage on the gate is greater than VGS-TH, but less than VGS. So in other words, there is a turn on voltage, and then there is a max voltage that you don't want to go over. Otherwise, you can reduce or, the, or uh, you'll impede the effectiveness of the gate oxide or begin damage. The MOSFET gate is a high impedance input, has capacitive traits, and the biggest, the biggest concern for us would be our input capacitance, which consists of capacitance from gate to source and also uh, drain to gate. The CDG also contains a capacitive issue or capacitive measure and a uh, characteristic known as the Miller effect. So when you're, as you're applying a voltage to the gate, this Miller effect causes an elongation of the charge of the gate and is one of the concerns or conditions that we take into account when we're uh, considering and defining our gate drivers. Path between source and drain is best characterized as resistive and therefore our uh, resistance from drain to source and the on state is a very important specification. MOSFET architect um, architectures today uh, include lateral and uh, vertical junctions. Uh, the lateral pros are it's a low gate charge, has fast switching speeds, Lateral disadvantages is we have what we call a high resistive channel rate. Um, vertical junction uh, definitions of designs today, which is typical of our power MOSFET, uh, has a lower RDS on for the same blocking voltage. It is even faster switching times than lateral uh, junctions or BJTs. The biggest disadvantage is that breakdown voltages above somewhere around 200 volts or greater your voltage drop is larger than competitive uh, or competitive architectures. MOSFETs are an enhancement mode device, so when power is applied to the gate, 
it's a switch turn on versus a depletion mode, which is power applied, which turn it off. Continuing with uh, prevalent uh, characteristics, since the junction's resistive, larger the silicon, the lower the IDS on, and therefore by lowering IDS on, you gain more current load. The large silicon sizes are costly and become, can become an assembly consideration. Uh, below, you see uh, three different charts here. They were referenced on the previous page, but you, we look at uh, output characteristics. So the output characteristic is as, your, um, as you apply your voltage to your gate, you'll increase the current, but until you get into the region of basically, the, if you stay in the linear region, which is at the knee of the curve, you're in the optimum place for uh, current. You don't want to get into the saturated area. It's a, to maintain MOSFET uh, operation in the Obenek region, you get basically there is a maximum load current for an applied gate voltage. If you go above the operating current at an applied voltage rate, you get out of the Omnic region at the knee of the curve and you suffer a significant rise in uh, gate voltage, therefore suffering, suffering conduction losses. Figure two, relationship, it shows the relationship of applied gate voltage to current flow. And then uh, figure three shows our uh, capacitance chart showing the prevalence of the input capacitance being the highest and it contains, as we mentioned, capacitive of gate to drain which is predominantly the uh, Miller charge effect. Uh, again, MOSFETs positive, are a positive temperature coefficient device, therefore they're more stable and are a great choice for paralleling them together. So we just previously mentioned that you can lower RDS on by increasing the size of the silicon. That can be costly, but since this device is a positive temperature coefficient device, they make themselves very, very useful in a parallel mode. Therefore, you can pick a device that will share loads equally and you can use a smaller device. With the source drain junction being resistive and also benefiting from positive temperature coefficient, uh, parallel devices lowers your cost, reduces size and uh, smaller packages in general. Natural byproduct of the MOSFET process is the creation of the parasitic diode form, formed across the source to drain junction. This acts as a clamping diode function, is somewhat uh, uh, affected by frequency. Dependent on MOSFET junction architectures, the parasitic diode speed of recovery can be an issue in applications other than motor, uh, motor control and driver applications. For very high frequency, something above 100 kilohertz switching, uh, it may be required to add an extra, para, an extra uh, fast rectifying diode external to the body diode. MOSFETs, a, a majority carrier device, makes it more resistive to thermal run, runaway, another condition of being very stable. As we mentioned, the uh, earl, uh, earlier uh, MOSFETs were, uh, were, very, were subjective to uh, voltage breakdown and also had effects on high rates of change for uh, voltage over time. The original MOSFET architecture created a, a parasitic MPN transistor across the junction and later devices shorted that junction out creating the body diode. Andrew has a question? Yes. Andrew's question was at about five minutes there was mention of VGS greater than VGH, but less than VGS. Is the latter VGS meaning VGS max? Yes, VGS max. That's correct, Andrew. We start the discussion of selection criteria for devices. Uh, in the selection criteria, when you're looking at your application and your design, you're going to use um, VDS, maximum voltage, your breakdown maximum voltage, maximum gate voltage, the voltage at which the gate begins to turn on and allow flow from uh, source to drain, uh, GFS or transconductance, the rate of change, 
Audison, as we've mentioned, a very critical spec. ID, maximum continuous current in a DC mode. You can also, depending on your application, consider a repetitive or switched current drain, instantaneous. QG, which is our gate charge. And theta JC, another very, very important uh, specification, especially when considering package of choice, and that is the uh, thermal resistance junction to case. VDS, maximum voltage drain to source. Today, a, param a parametric uh, specification not always called out in the um, electrical specification charts, most often today uh, listed in your absolute maximum ratings uh, as VDS. But basically, VDSS and BVDS, the, uh, the breakdown voltage of the parasitic body diode are of equal value. VGS, the maximum voltage that can be presented source to gate without depleting the oxide, is a critical spec. Most uh, junctions today in MOSFETs will actually tolerate voltages higher than the VGS spec, but that's a protection spec. As long as you stay within the max VGS guideline, you'll expect no oxide deprivation. It should, the junction should remain secure. And again, VGSTH, as we mentioned, is the voltage to the gate at which you start your current flow. GFS, uh, transconductance, is a representative measure of uh, rate of flow increase from source to drain, and it's based on the applied voltage to the gate. This measure is very, very near equivalent to the HFE specification in bipolar transistors. RDSON, as we've mentioned, the resistance of source to drain in the on state is measured under a known applied voltage condition to the gate and under a specific uh, load current. An ID, as we stated, is your maximum DC continuous current load from uh, drain to source. And Q, QG, which is very important as a measure or a representation of gate charge, um, and that is going to be used as part of your definition for your gate circuitry, gate drive circuitry. And theta JC, you're going to see here shortly where uh, minimizing, besides the junction to case uh, characteristics of the actual silicon, you're going to not want to impede thermal flows to the case. Minko is defining a group of products, standard products, power MOSFETs using a supplier silicon. Um, and what we've done is we've defined a package family for the power MOSFETs for hermetic applications to be used in the high reliability or harsh environments. What we've chosen is based on package metrics, silicon metrics, we've chosen packages such as the TO3, TO258, TO254, and a surface mount device known as the SMD 1.0, TO257 and an SMD 1.0, TO39 and a smaller cousin to the SMD 1 and 2. Depending on your total power dissipation required and your end application, whether it be through hole or surface mount, you'll choose one of these variants. Maximum power dissipation is based on TJ max minus ambient temperature applied and your theta J, calculated theta JC. We choose the appropriate package for each device based on application and environmental requirements as well as the power to be dissipated. So you're going to choose either one of those packages that we mentioned before. We're going to calculate a stack up of the package which includes the silicon, the attached methods for dye to package or dye to an intermediary substrate or heat spreader. You're going to uh, fine tune the theta JC by adjusting assembly materials methods, methods and processes. And then thermal resistance analysis junction to case has got an end target goal, as we mentioned, not to impede thermal flows from a uh, junction to the base of the uh, case. In the next slide, we're gonna, you're going to see a hypothetical stack up of a TO3 with a known set of material conditions. In this case, the uh, 
uh, base tab of the TO3 is a cold roll steel 1010. We're going to use a copper heat spreader to dissipate, since cold rolled steel doesn't have a very good thermal dynamic uh, on its own, we're going to use a copper heat spreader to spread the heat across a larger subsection of the uh, base tab. Uh, copper has an extremely good uh, thermal coefficient, so a great a great medium for thermal uh, bleed or thermal path. We're going to have a substrate because we're going to match metals. We don't want to place the dye that we acquire uh, with its nickel-based backing uh, directly down to copper, so we're going to use a substrate intermediary, intermediary to match metallurgical uh, layers. And in this case, we typically will use a BEO or a molybium uh, substrate because it has great thermal properties as well. Based on the stack up that we have of the package, heat spreaders, substrates, dye, attach me uh, mediums, whether it be uh, what type of solder, um, you, we calculate the resistive thermal path from the junction of the dye through all the layers down to the base and come up with your faded JC. In the case of the TO3, with the medium that we have chosen for our stack up for our power MOSFETs, we come up with a faded JC calculated at 0.59 degrees C per watt dissipated. So it's a very efficient package for us. It allows us to, uh, based on a junction temperature of 150 degrees C, you, if you figure 150 degrees C with an ambient temperature of 25 degrees C, you get a power dissipation uh, well over 200 watts. Dwayne has a question. Is any device that can be packaged a TO3 also available in SMD and a half? Uh, the, it depends on the uh, device. Uh, currently today, we'll, at the end, we'll show you that we have three devices that we're currently offering with the family increasing. Uh, most of the uh, devices will be offered in more than one package. You'll typically have a through hole as well as a surface mount. In the case of the TO3 today, the TO3 is offered in normally just the TO3 and or a TO258. We do not have it in the SMD as of current. Uh, future expansion of the product line will indeed offer a surface mount, and it is likely going to be the SMD 2.0. The next uh, thermal profile will look at another choice. Uh, again, depending on how it is to be dissipated, the device that you've chosen from our portfolio or anyone else's, you're we're looking at a TO257, an industry standard metal matrix flat pack, a tab based package. Uh, typically, it's capable of uh, dissipating powers of uh, wattage range of greater than uh, 75 watts or greater. In the case of ours, we're talking greater than 125 watts based on the material subset we're using. Again, we look at you have a base material, in this case, our TO257 is a copper oxy, op, oxygen-free copper. It's uh, plated with an electroless nickel. We're then putting down a substrate to, again, match the backside metal to the electroless nickel. It is, again, a either BEO or Molly BM substrate. So we're using it as a metal transition. has good thermal, good to great thermal properties. Um, then the dye. So again, we're going to go through a calculation of junction to case through all the thermal resistive path. And in the case of RTO257, uh, our, we're looking at a uh, theta JC of 0.97 degrees C per watt. So not quite as efficient as RTO3 stack up, but still in the industry, uh, better than a lot. We'll start at the beginning of uh, slide 16, which is uh, our methods of assembly, process, and selection. Uh, again, we recently we talked about the the stack up uh, the stack up of a product package um, based on power dissipation uh, material methods. So 
what we do here at Minko is we look at the materials that we have, the die that we've purchased, the metal uh, interface that we have, we choose a die attach that will be optimum for the uh, thermal resistive path uh, based on the material properties of the plating of the backside of the die and the solder and the surface we're attaching to we will choose the appropriate method of attach. In the case of our products TO3s, 257s, 258s, 254s all of them are electroless nickel plated we are choosing a solder attach method and our substrates, the plating chosen for the substrates, heat spreaders are all conducive or uh, compliant to the solder attach process. We use substrates for signal management as well as plating transition types as we mentioned and we also in addition will use heat spreaders to improve thermal dynamics of mating surfaces particularly those like a cold rolled steel 1010 where their thermal dynamics are not very good. They're better, they're a material used for strength such in, as in TO3 tabs where you're screwing down to heavy uh, heat sinks. They, you need the, the properties of steel for uh, stress related from uh, talking down uh, as a mechanical tie down. So to improve the thermal dynamics we use a copper heat spreader to gain more radiant surface area for thermal uh, bleed or relief. Uh, our wire bond methods, we choose the wire bond based on current carrying capacity, mating materials of the plating, the bonding methods based on current density and density spread. So in other words, we may choose to pick a, a aluminum wire bond of a certain diameter and we may choose a diameter smaller than necessary but we'll use more of them. So I get what I'm doing there is I'm looking to still service the current carrying capacity that's required but by using multiple wires I am actually reducing a, another parasitic effect called an inductive or a smalling of the pipe. Think of a, a big water faucet. If you've got a four inch water faucet going into a two inch pipe there's a, there's a, a little backflow at the change in diameter so when you use multiple wires you can actually relieve that inductive rush. That's a, an improvement in the electrical properties. So a lot of times we'll do that to help with the electrical performance as well as uh, decrease or help spread uh, current density across the whole surface of a die. Question. What solder combination do you recommend for high temperature applications 200C? We're using a, uh, ours is a tin silver uh, combination. Uh, it gives us uh, good thermal properties but is also very good for uh, high temp uh, in now all solders have a, uh, a reflow range but these are all in the very high 280 plus degree C type of uh, region. So still considered uh, so called a soft solder but a one that's tolerant to the heat much better performance than uh, something typical in the industry like 6337 or the old 6040 which is a high lead content so very very soft. We go on the other properties at the bottom of that slide you see something uh, types of materials used in wire bonding or in bond methodologies you can use wires and in some cases uh, depending on current you could also choose to use a ribbon and ribbon becomes a very useful uh, tool in uh, some of the surface mount packages such as the SMD uh, to help spread temperature across more than one plating surface or, or seating plane where you might use a ribbon which will help with not only the current capacity and density or current density dispersion across the surface but also help with, uh, with thermal dynamics. Continuing with the discussion of wire bonds, we, as we talked about, may choose uh, Num the number of wires per bond based on its function whether it's control or power as we stated uh, to improve with uh, current carrying density the density spread over the surface of a, a die surface and minimize potential inductive issues. After we have the die attached to the package through any transverse media such as substrates or heat spreaders we now and we've wire bonded the device we now have 
a certain seal properties. These seals properties are chosen based on the package style. You use a seam weld for your metal matrix or frame or tab packages. We use compression weld for cans. And we use solder seal for the co-fired alumina type packages such as the SMD surface mount package. Next, going to talk about the, you, you now have a package device. We have an electrical criteria that we've uh, chosen based on an application, a, a requirement for power dissipation at a known voltage across drain to source with, a cur with control parameters selected based on our gate drive circuitry and a max and min gate voltage. Uh, you're now going to, we're going to thermal, we're going to electrically characterize these products across all voltage and temperature extremes. We're going to verify the DC and AC specifications valid against the original OEM specification. In this case, our original semiconductor manufacturer's device specification. And those that we set here at Minco based on our high rel or harsh environment applications of use. So we're going to stress the component across all thermal corners, all voltage corners under load conditions, and it's going to be done so with programs that we develop here internally to Minko on ATE equipment and also some uh, IEEE uh, stack equipment. We'll do thermal analysis uh, based on measurements. So we're going to we actually do our uh, thermal modeling or analysis of the calculated theta JC based on a true power-up sequence of a burn-in circuit that the devices go through in all of the QML, Q, or 883 type of applications. These devices see 168 hours at an elevated temperature to equate to 1,000 hours of life test. We use the same circuit mock-up that's going to the device is going to be presented to and burn in, and we pass a current at a known voltage across the junction. We measure the the case rise above ambient, and then calculate back to our calculated formula to make sure that what we see in a power a true live power distribution mockup is what we got or close to what we got in the calculated form. At the end of the day, these parts, after at these devices, after being fully exercised, characterized, and shipped to a Minko product data sheet, our end customer is going to take them, go through an analysis, or placed on a end circuit application card, and they're going to do thermal dynamic modeling mockups based on either FlowTherm Pack or FlowTherm IC. They're going to use some modeling software to make sure that. Our theta, theta JC based on a JETIC heat model, whether the, the, they're going to choose the package based on that. What we do in our thermal analysis and a live mock-up and measure is make sure the device exceeds the specification to which we sell it for in our data sheet. During the exercising or through the characterization of the product electrically, we come up with some performance metrics. We'll use one called figure of merit. It's a relationship between on-state resistance of drain to source and gate charge. So it is truly, it's a relationship metric, but the lower the measurement metric, the better the device is. So in the case of our, uh, the MTPIR F9140, it's a power MOSFET in a TO3 or also available in a TO258, it performs much better than the original design and device that uh, was done years ago by International Rectifier. So the original International Rectifier socket that was designed some 10 to 12 years ago, we have gone and come up with an alternative device using semiconductor material from Fairchild Semiconductor and we meet or exceed the data sheet specifications of the original IR device. We also use two other uh, metrics to help determine the performance of our device against the original design and winner. And that would be reverse recovery as measured in 
nanocoulombs, or QRR, and then another measure of reverse recovery, TRR, measured in nanoseconds, and this is really a, a measurement of the body diode performance. Again, the lower the number, the metric number, the better the device is going to operate, or it's better than the original or c the one you're measuring against. In all cases, we meet or exceed the original device that we've targeted, and in most cases, we've, we're much better than the original device. The, as we mentioned, the initial product offering, we have uh, three devices offered. David has a question. Have you tested your parts against radiation TID and SEE for aerospace applications? We have not. These have not been tested yet to uh, total dose, single event, uh, upset, or latch up. It is something that could be considered here in the future, um, but at this point in time I have no, uh, no knowledge of the expected targets for total dose or the upset value. Current uh, product offering, again, we have a, a grouping of P-channel MOSFETs available uh, immediately now, available in a, from a TO39, a can, small can, up to a, a TO3 for a 9140. Uh, we have N-channels in process now and will be available by the end of the year, actually uh, uh, mid-Q4 and then uh, continuing on in the first quarter of 2015. And all of our power MOSFETs to date are based on silicon that we, uh, very good silicon that we're getting from a Fairchild Semiconductor. I also list uh, references of value and of, an, an, of notation. Um, there is a lot of information available today on the web uh, from many sources. Uh, the MOSFET today has uh, a wide acceptance in all markets, not just high reliability, harsh environment markets, uh, industrial, commercial. Um, they're, they're used very, very widely. They have some unique properties that make them very good for, uh, especially in load balancing. You can literally tie the gates, the drains, the sources together uh, because of their positive thermal coefficients, they self-level, as I would say. They, they moderate as a junction warms. It blocks change in voltage. So it self-compensates. It doesn't allow the parallel devices. One will not run away. So great device, and we look forward to uh, building the standard product portfolio at Minco to offer to our customer base. We'd like to personally thank you for attending today. I would look forward to uh, hosting more in the future. Any questions, I can be reached at Minco at any time. Email address is uh, david.harrison, so it's H-A-R-R-I-S-O-N, at mincotech.com. Again, thank you very much. Look forward to talking to you in the future. For more information about Minco Technology Labs, visit www.mincotech.com.